How's it going in your world? Pretty good here. It's uh, almost 80 degrees in fall in Minnesota, or I think technically still summer, but it's starting to feel like fall, especially in the evenings. Anyway, we are in the middle of a capacity test. You can probably hear some of the noise behind me. That's both air conditioners running in our RV. Let's check in on where we're at as far as state of charge and all that, and then uh, let me show you the battery bank we're working with. We are down to 11% now. This has been running for, uh, I think we're getting close to 24 hours now. I haven't been running both air conditioners the entire time because you can't really do that when it's 60 or 50 degrees at night. Uh, but they have been running now and we've been using much more power this afternoon. We are tracking all this data in the Victron VRM. We're definitely getting down to where it really matters and we find out uh, did we get what we paid for with these uh, batteries from Alibaba. So uh, let's go down in the bay and take a look at the individual batteries and take some individual readings uh, and all that sort of stuff. The other thing I want to quickly mention is I'm used to lead acid battery voltages and you know what we saw in there 24.9 that's great I mean that's like you almost got especially under 120 amp load which we're under right now um, you know that's like great capacity but we are getting close to the end there and voltage is going to drop off very quickly here in a little bit um, hopefully the number we are trying to beat is uh, 1120 amp hours. That is, that would be full rated capacity. Ideally, I'd like a little bit more, but we'll see. Oh, excuse the mess. Uh, that's just the way it is here. So what's the good news? Good news is all of this is cold, ice cold, really. Well, not ice cold, but it's cold, cold to the touch. Uh, this over here, a little warm, not bad at all. Um, I am feeling some heat. When I touch these, I get a little bit of heat. And you know what? I, I've got some thoughts on these bus bars that you get off of Amazon. Yeah, I don't think they're very good. Uh, I think I might be rebuilding my own. Another video. Subscribe if you want to see that. Anyway, uh, let's turn on voltage meter here. So I was, I had that one tracking there for a while. All right, 3.14, that's not bad at all. Uh, at, uh, let's see, we can, we got the BMV here so we can, you know, do 124 amps. All right, 10.8% state of charge left. Uh, let's get us reading on all the cells here. Okay, so another cell, 3.13, 3.14, Now they will, it is normal, and they will start to deviate near end of er, lower state of charge. That's where differences in manufacturing and whatnot will become more apparent. Trying to hold this in. Uh, 3.14 or something. All right, that one's a little bit lower. That's the lowest one I've seen at three. Come on. 3.14 and the, oh, we lost you. And the last one here is 3.13. So this is the one that's maybe got me the most nervous here at 3.09. That's gonna be the one that's gonna make or break our our figures I think as you can tell uh, 
nothing is looking too crazy. Uh, you probably did notice that I still had the active balancer on there. I thought about disconnecting that for the discharge test, but in the end I decided to leave it and uh, just see how it goes. If it's a problem on the charge back up later, we will deal with that and make appropriate changes. Uh, but for now, we're gonna keep going with this and I'll check in as uh, things change and if we get any problems uh, or if we have a successful. All right, we've been running a little bit longer here, down to 8% now, still holding at 3.127 on that particular cell. Delta V is still, uh, I think about 0.4, so that's all right. There's not much spread in it. And here's something that's kind of interesting. See that fan on the BMS back there? It's not even moving. Uh, that thing is really efficient or not getting hot or what. I don't know when the fan ever comes on. My, uh, some of those bus bars are getting really warm. We're gonna have to address that for sure. Full test and we hit uh, one of the cutoffs. Okay, I took a quick break here. Um, I was noticing this terminal here was getting a little bit warm um, and I didn't want to damage the battery or anything. Um, so I just had to tighten I had to tighten that bolt down and um, actually I was going to take it out and cut an exact length one but uh, I got my right and left confused and I ended up tightening it down and it's just fine now. The lock washer is uh, crushed now for some reason it wasn't before. So, um, and I'm watching the voltage on it rise pretty quickly. So I'm guessing it's equalizing now and we weren't drawing as much from that far cell as we, I thought we were. I thought we had solved this, but I guess not. So um, I'm gonna let this sit here for a minute or two. We are at 6.5% capacity, but the uh, deviation being hardly anything, that's a really good sign. That means the pack is still very balanced. This connection here now is cool to the touch. So I think I'm gonna start up the air conditioners again. That's what we're looking at inside. We are at 1,043 amp hours consumed. And we're still holding pretty steady. So far so good. All right, we're back inside here and things are getting interesting. We have just crossed 24 volts and it is dropping but we don't have too many more amp hours to go to reach our target of 1120 so let's take a look so we are at uh four percent state of charge 1072 uh, amp hours used and what's interesting is the midpoint deviation has changed Normally that is 0.6 at this amperage at 120 or so. It's now 0.3. So that means we are getting some more uh, deviation within the pack. Although internally, I don't see a whole lot uh, looking at the BMS values. As you can see, um, just while we've been chatting here, as far as voltage goes, we've dropped 0.2 or 12 points. Hopefully we can hang on. Uh, I have my cutoff voltage set at 21. I will turn off the air conditioners before it gets there because I don't want the BMS to abruptly shut everything off. Um, so we'll see where we get. But the thing to keep in mind with these voltages is these are under load, so they're always lower than what they're actively reading. Sometimes I think this is so silly, but my heart is just racing. I'm hoping it's gonna get there. I'm hoping it's gonna get there. I'm hoping we can get there. We've got uh, oof, about 40 amp hours to go. So that's what, 15 minutes? That's all we gotta make. Come on, little big battery bank. You can do it. All right, we did it. We made it over 1100 amp hours, but the voltage is dropping and relatively fast. Uh, the lowest cell currently is 
2.7, 2.6, and I've got it at 2.5 as my cutoff. So when it starts getting to 2.59, 2.58, I think I'm gonna call it. So I don't know if we will get there, but we will keep an eye on it. Well, we got really, really close. I wanna say we are 99% capacity, which is pretty darn good. Um, we had one cell group, cell group eight, drop to uh, 2.5. I let it actually go down to, I think, 2.5, um, three or so, but it was dropping fast. I even went and ch checked it in the uh, on the actual battery. I was not relying on the BMS itself, but it was pretty close. Um, and we just didn't get there. So where did we get? Let's look. We are at 1,106 amp hours down to 1% capacity, only 14, no, 13.5 amp hours short of uh, full 100% rated capacity. Now, why were we short? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I don't know enough about this battery technology. I can say that um, the way I discharge these was I run the water heater late last night and I left the air conditioner fans on all night and the air conditioners themselves ran for a while as well. But through the night, there wasn't much more than about a 30 to 35 amp load on them all night. And then today when it started heating up, I put the thermostat down a little bit to jumpstart the air conditioners and those ran for uh, quite a while. Uh, well, up until just now. So I don't know if that we, didn't use a higher amperage draw in the beginning, you know, would that, would that uh, afford us better capacity? It's been my experience, the slower you draw power out, the more capacity you get uh, with lead acid called the uh, uh, Pukert effect. There is a slight Pukert effect with lithium ion batteries, not nearly as pronounced. Um, it doesn't really start kicking in until you get to higher C rates, like um, I think one C. You'll see maybe about a 10% loss of capacity, but that's it. Um, maybe even less than that, maybe only 5%. It's not much. Um, and, you know, we're well within inside that. We were only running about 125 amp hour or amp draw at its max. And our 1C rate would be over 1,000 amps. So we were at, I don't know, 0.2C at the most. 0.15C is probably more accurate, which should be, you should get pretty darn close to rated capacity. So I really think if cell group eight was higher, we would have pulled full. Um, all the other cell groups were at, I think there were some at 2.9, 2.8, uh, definitely could have lasted another five, 10 minutes, which would have put us over the mark. So uh, why was that specific group not pulling its weight? I don't know. But then again, it pulled 99% of its weight, maybe even a little bit more. Anyway, that's uh, all I have for this. We've got more to do on the battery bank. Um, there's going to be some more updates and improvements I'm going to be making to it. Um, just organizing that bay a little bit better, uh, rebuilding some bus bars. Um, dude, those are just some of the things off the top of my head. Um, but let me hear from you. Uh, what are you working on? Uh, are you working on anything like this? Uh, any tips? Anything uh, should you different to run this capacity test again. I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty happy with it in reality. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go back to the supplier and complain. Oh, where's my 1%? Ugh. Ah, it'll be fine. Anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, you like this channel, give us a subscribe, comment below. See you guys next time. Bye.